Yo, 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 what's up, man? It's your boy, Marcel P. Black, checking in. Another episode of Black Thoughts Radio. If you're watching, this is the vlog. If you're listening, you know what I'm saying? It's the podcast, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I apologize for last week, last Monday. Um, I stayed up really, really late doing a whole bunch of other stuff, and I decided not to do a podcast last week. Um, it was after Fade the Flow. I had a lot of stuff going on. And more importantly, not more importantly, but also importantly, I dropped a single. You know, I haven't dropped any music, new music, since September of 2017. So if, you, if, if you've been following me on social media, you know I've been telling you how to go to my website, marcelpblack.com, where I released, <coughs> excuse me, where I released the um, first single, you know what I'm saying, Principles and Standards, um, that's on, you know what I'm saying, my upcoming EP with the homeboy, Nashville-born, Dallas-based, uh, Beat Smith named M. Slego. Um, we dropped it last Monday. Man, it's done really, really, really well at radio. It's done really, really well as far as on the stream. And, you know, a lot of people are saying, like, yo, you snapping, you was in your bag on this one. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really, really excited about the single principles and standards. I mean, I got back to the boom bap, and I'm really, really excited about that, doing that. I mean, the whole project, you know, the, pro the EP is called For the Culture, and uh, it will be on online and all streamers, you know what I'm saying? Lord willing, you know what I'm saying, March 19th. I'm not taking no time. I'm dropping it. I'm going on tour ASAP, you know what I'm saying? Dropping it, and I'm going or whatever. So not about doing long, drawn out, you know what I'm saying, uh, roll out for the situation. You know, so I'm going to start trying to do my little media run and, you know what I'm saying, doing different podcasts and interviews very, very, very soon or whatever. But y'all do me a favor. Y'all make sure I go to marcelpblack.com and check it out. Like I said, I'm on all streamers, Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, definitely on marcelpblack.bandcamp.com, uh, Napster, Rhapsody, whatever, uh, Apple Music, Amazon Music, anything you could possibly think of. I think it's on YouTube, too. Anything you could possibly think of, I'm on there. Y'all stream it, y'all buy it, y'all download it. I mean, you know, you stream it or whatever, but if you want to download it, you know what I'm saying, you can download it for free, pay what you want to on Bandcamp. But y'all support, man. It's really, really good music. It feels good to be back putting out new music. A lot of people are, you know what I'm saying, really speaking highly of it. And so I'm, I'm really, really excited to get on the road and perform some of this new music for y'all. So y'all go check it out. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, For the Culture is dropping uh, March 19th, you know what I'm saying, on, on my website and everything else. Of course, I'm going to have physicals. Of course, I'm going to have t-shirts and maybe some other different types of merchandise and apparel. But I'm definitely starting off with t-shirts and CDs. So when I go on tour, my fans can, you know, come shop with me. Or just anywhere else. If you want to shop online, that's, that's, that's cool, too. Um, So, I'm drinking my water. It's 1.49 in the morning, by the way. I just got back from the gym. You know what I'm saying? Fresh out of the shower. So, I ain't, my hand really, I just put some grease in my hair for the camera. You know what I'm saying? I ain't really brushing nothing like that or whatever. Just put some oil in my face. Or whatever, put a shirt on, cause I was about to get in the bed. I realized I didn't do this right now. I'm not gonna do it at all. Um, so I want to talk about for artists, for creatives, for rappers. You know, I'm a rapper, so I'm also talk about from a rapper standpoint. But I try to say things that can apply to any and everybody else, um, as it pertains to you know, what I'm saying just being a creative and just putting out work, or you know, it could be anything. You know, what I'm saying you got to be a creative or nothing, just a regular human being. But I'm talking from a standpoint of a rap of a rapper. So. Um, we're going to talk about the importance of mental health and taking care of your mental health just as a person or whatever. But we're coming from the standpoint of an artist. So, um, I'm 35 years old. I've been doing music, like putting out music since I was first recording and putting out music since I was 16, 17 years old. Signed my first deal when I was 18, 19 years old. Got out my first deal when I was 23. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know. Um, always been an underground conscious rapper and I've never really had the type of platform and support built in for me. You know, I came up in the time when everybody was telling me I shouldn't be doing this, I should move away, this, that, and the third, or what have you. It took a level of mental tenacity, you know what I'm saying, to be able to not listen to what everybody else said and you know what I'm saying, find what's in myself to even make it to 35. And also, I'm a mental health counselor, too. So, I'm going to talk more about that later. So, I mean, I understand that mental health is cliche. I mean, I even cliche. I think it's good. I think that black people are, we hear, we hear it a whole lot more on social media, on television. We hear Charlamagne the God talk about it. We hear about it a lot, you know what I'm saying? But I think it's a good thing because... You know, it's been so taboo, especially being black and being grow up in the church, just pray it away, don't talk about it, just being a man, suck it up, black people don't go to therapy. Nah, nigga, we need to go. We need to take care of all of that. You know what I'm saying? I remember Naeem Akbar said the black people are crazy as hell. You know what I'm saying? You gotta understand, like, you had, you know, the actual peculiar institution of chattel slavery ended 
there was no remedy for it. You know what I'm saying? So we deal with what's called post-traumatic slavery disorder. You know what I'm saying? And we deal with it as well. The descendants, the descendants of the enslaved, as well as the descendants of the enslaver, still deal with it as well. And honestly, like Killer Mike says, and I agree, we dealt with apartheid up until the 60s. You know what I'm saying? So we've only been, quote unquote, free, you know what I'm saying, as black people, you know what I'm saying, for... You know what I'm saying? 60 years. You know what I'm saying? Since the 60s or whatever. 60, 65 years or whatever. 55, 60 years or what have you. So I think it's very, very important that people are talking about it, but I don't think people actually break down it, you know, break it down into the nuances of things of nature. So we always dealing with, you know what I'm saying, things in our neighborhoods, you know what I'm saying, our environments, the struggle of just being black, you know what I'm saying, on top of trying to be a creative in an industry that's really, really, really difficult. You know what I'm saying? You know, as artists, we work off of emotion. We walk, you know what I'm saying? And so we wear our emotions on our sleeves, you know what I'm saying? And we have a lot, a lot of insecurities. For as fearless as I am, I have definitely have a lot of insecurities. And I definitely often, you know what I'm saying, second guess myself. I, don't, I got something in my eye. I don't. I don't. I, I often second guess myself, but it takes a level of mental tenacity to get what I got to do. And so it's, here's, a cute, here's a few things that like I try to do to make sure that my mental is taken care of. Number one. I try to only engage in what I can control. I try to only engage in what I can control. If I don't have any control over the situation, you know what I'm saying, and and nobody's really trying to help me kind of get what I need to get, I don't fuck with it. I do what I can do to help myself. You know what I'm saying? Fans, I'm going to give you a perfect example. I've been doing shows at Spanish Moon for a long, long time. At my best, I could bring 150 people to Spanish Moon. The last couple of times I did something to Spanish Moon, it was only maybe 60 people there. And Spanish Moon is a big venue. And as much as I love Spanish Moon, it's a historic temple for hip-hop and Baton Rouge. You know what I'm saying? All the great hip-hop artists have toured to stop there. It meant something to me. I can't bring the people to bring the crowd that I want to bring the crowd. I can't control that. I can't make people come through the door. And realistically, if I'm only bringing 50 to 60 people, I need to move to a smaller venue. So that's the reason why I started doing culture over everything at a smaller venue. I can control you know what I'm saying? I have a better chance of controlling the outcome in a place that's smaller that can fit what I'm realistically doing and what have you. So I don't look crazy into being upset that I only got 60 people in a 400 cap room. If I get 60 people in a 100 cap room, it looks a whole lot better. That's one particular existence. It's just like, you know, um, I can't control if you play myself on the radio. I can't control if you want to interview me for a podcast. So I'm gonna do my own podcast. I can't control if you get if you if if a promoter wants to book me for a show, but I can book my own show. I can't control if, you know what I'm saying, uh, whatever. You know what I'm saying. I try to engage in what I can control or whatever, and I try to you know. Of course, I'm a human being, and I think about it, and it worries me. But you know, I can't make somebody do something for me if they don't want to do it. Because I'm not going to do shit I don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? You know, regardless of what people say, people do what they do. What people do is what really is. You know what I'm saying? People can talk all this shit all day. But what people really do is what they really do. And you know what I'm saying? So you have to do what you really want to do. You have to, you know what I'm saying? If you can't, you know, if nobody's booking you, you got to reach out to them. If nobody's, you know what I'm saying, coming to your online store, you need to go to the venues. You need to go to the people, go to the block or whatever. You know what I'm saying? For me, I have the saying where I say, there's more things that I will do that I can't do. I'm not even going to fight with the shit I can't do. If I can't do it, that's whatever. I'm not going to stress over the shit that I can't do. You know what I'm saying? As of right now, I don't have a booking agent. I have a full-time job and a family. I can't leave and go out on tour for two or three weeks at a time, realistically. Because, you know, I lose my job and, you know... Me and my wife and my kids are here down here in Louisiana with myself, by myself, ourselves rather, and we have no family. But what I can do, I can do three to four shows a weekend. You understand what I'm saying? And I will do that, and I'm going to pimp it until whatever. A lot of people say, Marcel, I don't know how you do it, man. You, you go, you know, in a month's time, you might do seven shows, but it might take three weekends to do it. That's what I got to do, and that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to freak it every single time, and I'm going to monetize to the best of my ability. Lord willing, I'm working on to the time where I can tour for X amount of days and be gone and not have to fly this or fly that and keep going in and out. But realistically, that's not my life. So I'm going to control what I can control. You understand what I'm saying? And those are things that I will do. So every single year, you know what I'm saying, I, I, don't, I can't get a record deal with Jay-Z, but I can start my own label. You understand what I'm saying? I can't get a distribution deal with Universal, but I can distribute my own music. I will do that. You understand what I'm saying? So it's very, very important to think about the things that you can do. Engage in what you can control. 
You understand what I'm saying? And those will be the things that separate you, the real from the fake. Because a lot of people say what they want to do, but they don't do it. But some people can do the things that they want to do, but they want somebody to do it for them. And that's where they fuck up at. You have to do the things that you can do. You know, those are the things that you will do. And let me tell you something. The more things that you do, more opportunities will come into place that will put you in a better position than, you know what I'm saying, you waiting for somebody to come do something for you. Like, it's just like this with me. If I plan to run 100 miles, if I only run 75, that's 75 miles further than I would have went than if I ever never left the starting line. And sometimes the 75 miles might lead me to somewhere different and have different opportunities that actually let me get to 100 without going a traditional route. So it's very, very important that you understand in your mind, you don't beat yourself over up over the things that you cannot do. You know what I'm saying? Don't don't worry if you can't squeeze blood from a turnip. You know what I'm saying? Go get you a damn orange. But if you can't, if you can squeeze blood from an orange, go squeeze a fucking orange then. Don't worry about that goddamn turnip. You know what I'm saying? So it's very, very important that you that you that you, you know what I'm saying, find the things that you will do that you can do. And if you if you work hard on accomplishing the goals that you have, you know what I'm saying, it'll put you in a better place mentally and you'll find joy. And let me tell you something. The beautiful thing to me, to me, for me, the definition of hustling is the art of creating opportunities. So for me, I get a super duper duper joy but behind creating an idea, working towards completing that goal. And once that goal is finished, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really feel good about myself. And it puts me in a place, and I feel like I can do anything. For instance, I'm a, well, I'm going to talk about this more later. But, you know, as you know, I talk about this on my podcast and on my blog. Um, back in September, I was di diagnosed as a diabetic. I felt so, so, so good when I went to the doctor um, last Monday, which would be the 25th for my doctor's appointment. And the doctor told me, you know what I'm saying, he told me my A1C dropped at one point. He told me my, my blood pressure is out of the hypertension range. I officially lost 44 pounds. Um, I don't need any medicine for cholesterol. I really don't need to take no metformin or whatever. I felt so, so good that I set up to accomplish a goal by eating healthier, by losing weight and working out, taking care of my mind and my body. You know what I'm saying? Like That was the best feeling in the world. He told me you're doing a great job. And when he called me back and told me my results the next day, I really, really felt accomplished, and it made me feel like I could do anything. In 2017, when I set out to do 15 states of bust, and I ended up doing 17, man, I felt like that was the biggest accomplishment. That was the hardest I've ever worked a book, period, as an artist, that 2017, trying to accomplish those goals. And I felt great. I felt great. I worked really, really hard, and now it's easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's super-duper easy for me to book these shows, and I don't never feel pressed because me doing that set myself up as a legit national touring artist, you know what I'm saying? So, but I felt great about myself, and I felt that I can do anything I want to. I just had to learn to be realistic in the goals that I'm trying to accomplish, you know what I'm saying? And those are the things that I will do. I don't worry about what I can't do. And if I can't get them done at the time, I'm going to try to shift them to things that I will do later, you know what I'm saying? So it's very, very important, you know what I'm saying? So kind of piggybacking off of what I said about uh, 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 you know, me feeling good about working hard and, and the hard work paying off, you got to focus on positive things. That sounds cliche. That sounds cliche. There's a lot of things going on. And I ain't saying ignore the, the, the negativity that's going on in your life. You definitely need to handle that situation, but, pos but focus on the positive. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, I don't look at, I try to look at, if I see somebody who I admire or somebody who's a peer and they get an opportunity that I don't get or whatever, and it might be some bullshit why I don't get it, or it might just be might be not time. I'm not jealous. I'm not hating on nobody. You know what I'm saying? I focus on what I can be doing positive. Okay, boom. Well, you might not have got to get booked for this festival. He did, but you got this show. You got this. You might not have did this show at the Varsity. You might not have did the show at Spanish Moon. You might not have to go to travel to California, Spain, or wherever, but you did get to do this. And always take pride and take seriously what you are doing, what you got doing. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I always say, man, everybody's already given everything they need from the most high. You know what I'm saying? To succeed. It's in us. And everybody has their own superpower. We just got to find it. So find a superpower. Focus on that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, th that's how you get over some of these obstacles in your mind. I see so many rappers who got so much talent. They cannot get out of their head. I had to tell one of my friends, and I ain't going to say his name. I was like, bro, you're super fucking talented. 
If you do not make it, it's not because of the gatekeepers. It's not because of the industry. It's not because of record labels. It's not because of a manager. It's because of what's going on up in here. You can't get out your own way. It's so many rappers. Oh, my God. It is so many rappers that I know local, that I know abroad. Their mindset is 100% wrong, and they beat themselves up. Mentally, they cannot get out their own way. They're not, they're, they're, you know what I'm saying? People are, are so afraid of taking, you know what I'm saying, or being vulnerable and, and or, you know, and taking a risk. You know what I'm saying? They're so afraid. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to be real with themselves. They don't want to kind of deal with what's going on. And so some people are so comfortable with struggling, that's all they know. So they'd rather live upset and, and angry and hurt within the struggle than try to, you know what I'm saying, go outside their they box to get help and change their situation. You know what I'm saying? You got to focus. You got to get out your head sometimes. Get out your own way. Get out your own head. Focus on what's positive. And find a plan based on what's positive. Like, you know, the thing about working at Big Buddy and 10 through 60, I learned about being asset-based as opposed to deficit-based. Asset-based is you find the positive things about yourself and others, and you work upon that. Now, I ain't saying ignore the deficits, but a lot of times, you know, deficit is the bad things. Of course, you need to be aware of the things that's going wrong with your life. You know what I'm saying? For me, the deficit was my health. You know what I'm saying? So, I found the positive in the thing that I find peace in running on the elliptical. And, you know, I find a positive in the fact that I just want to live and not die young because a nigga fat because of shit that I wanted to eat. You understand what I'm saying? And so, you know, let's work on the fact that I'm motivated to change my life and that's what it's going to be. And so me working out, take care of my body is kind of alleviating the negative because I'm living a healthier lifestyle, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later again. It's so, so, so important. You understand what I'm saying? That you focus on the positive and, and you, you, you fix your assets. So for me. I've never been a big blog person. My my, I've never been. You know, I ain't got a whole bunch of Twitter followers, Instagram followers. But I'm damn good in person. I'm a damn good promoter. You know, of myself. You know, what I'm saying. Um, and I'm I'm really good at networking. I'm a damn good performer. So that's what I focus on. I'm not worried because I ain't got a whole bunch of followers on Twitter, Instagram. I'm not worried about that shit. Of course, it needs to go up. But I'm really, really, really going to focus on my personal connection with people and rocking every fucking stage I do and putting out great music and doing good, good business. And I'm going to focus on my assets. And I'm going to work my assets and let my, allow my assets to take care of the deficits or what have you. Um, here's something that's so, so, so important. I'm going to go past 30 minutes today because, man, watch the company you keep. Oh, my God. Man, stay away from negative niggas. Stay away from negative women. Stay. I don't care if it's, you know what I'm saying, record label. I don't care if it's niggas in your crew. I don't care if it's your old lady. Keep the negative motherfuckers away from you as much as possible. If you see me in Baton Rouge, you don't see me running with no rappers. I have a positive, positive mindset. I'm out here trying to grind. I'm out here trying to hustle. Yes, I'll give advice to a lot of young rappers. You know, there's a lot of people I'm really, really cool with. But you ain't going to see me click clacking with a whole bunch of niggas who are always griping and complaining. That shit weighs on your mental health so, so much. Just niggas who, man, niggas sleeping on me. Man, I don't want to hear none of that shit. That's one thing you ain't never heard about Marcel P. Black. You ain't never heard me complain about what another nigga doing. And how it's keeping me from doing shit. Because I don't believe in that shit. Because can't a motherfucker stop me in this city anywhere else. Because I engage what I can control. So a motherfucker can't stop me from doing what I want to do. So you don't never hear me complain about how I'm slept on. And you know. It's a lot of niggas who don't fuck with me. Who don't book me. I don't give a fuck. Because I book my own shit. I can control that. I don't like it. But of course. You know what I'm saying. Look. And, and haters. Oh my God. Whew. Jesus Christ. Man, this niggas who've been shooting shots at me for five or six years. It's like every person, any rapper who I've ever had beef with or a nigga hating on me, 99.7% of the time I had love for them, we worked together and they mad. Man, I don't worry about no other rappers. My biggest thing is I get frustrated because I care too much about the scene. I care too much about the community. And I care too much about, you know what I'm saying, people doing right to build a community. That, you know what I'm saying, a lot of times I don't get to participate in participate in myself unless I insert myself into the situation. But as far as like another nigga getting some money, man, go ahead. This niggas who I don't like and don't like me. If I see them doing good, I don't waste time worrying about no niggas who hating, who talking bad. It's funny, I've been hearing these rap songs and niggas be like, yo niggas is fake. I can't trust nobody around me. That's your fault, nigga. I trust, I only keep niggas who I fuck with around me. And it don't be no rappers. Of course, my best friends live in Jackson. And, you know, I fuck with Steph Simon up in, uh, 
You know what I'm saying? Up in Tulsa, you know, Fifth Child, Dollar Black, then my bros. Alfred, that's my nigga. My, my nigga Ghost Dog, you know what I'm saying? Out in uh, North Carolina. I got a lot of rap homies. I'm hella, hella cool. All my Memphis homies, we talk on the phone. We chop it up. Them my bros. Them my peers. And I fuck with them because they positive people and they moving forward. And I can trust them. But you don't never see me out with a nigga who I can't trust, who I can't fuck with. If it's a nigga who I don't fuck with, I'm going to slap that with him. If, if I do that, I'm going to keep it moving. I don't worry about no haters, man. And we got to stop giving people with negative intentions for you. We got to start giving them mental space. It got back to me. The nigga was hating me on this, hating on me this weekend. And I really got upset about it. I thought about, you know what? Nigga, I'm about to go on tour. I'm about to go to New York. I'm doing these festivals in Virginia, getting paid well. I'm not worried about no nigga who's worried about me. Because hating is a sign of you losing to me. And I'm not about to worry about a nigga who losing straight up and down. So at the end of the day, watch the company you keep. Don't worry about no haters, bro. Because honestly, you know, as young black men in America, we need to be showing love to each other anyways. So I try not to give anybody any mental space, you know what I'm saying, as it pertains to, you know what I'm saying, what I'm trying to do to knock me off my grind or what have you. So these are the things that weigh on people's mental health. That's what I'm kind of talking about the different things that does weigh on my mental health. And you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I deal with self-doubt, all this shit. I deal with depression and anxiety, all that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? And so these are some of the things that's kind of weighing on my mind, you know what I'm saying, as an artist and as a creative, you know, which brings me to my next thing, self-care. For me, it's important to do things because music has stressed me out so much. A good friend of mine, we had a great, great talk when he was going through a situation. And one thing I told him, I said, bro, your life depends on music too much. You feel like if you're not a superstar, music, in music, you'll be a failure as a person. The thing about this, I love hip hop. I love the culture. I love the hustle. But if I never do it again, I'm still going to work as hard as I can. I love being a husband more than anything else. I love being a father. I get a thrill from helping these young brothers and sisters out in these streets as an organizer. You know what I'm saying? So, I am Marcel P. Black, but Brian Marcel Williams is more important than anything else. I find value in my life working to accomplish other goals outside of hip-hop. Now, I love hip-hop. I love music. I love being an artist. I love being a touring artist, a performer, a creative. I love that shit. But that doesn't define who Brian Marcel Williams is. It does define who Marcel P. Black is, and it's very close. It's a thin line between the two, but I understand there's a difference, what have you. So for me... My self-care, when I get stressed out, be a life of music, I'm on this health kick. You know what I'm saying? For me, I used to, I was killing my body for years because in, instead of doing something positive with my emotions, I, I self-medicated. I don't smoke weed. I never did drugs in my life. I self-medicated by eating. If, if you've ever seen pictures of me from 10, 15 years ago when I was a basketball player, I was kind of kind of, kind of swollen in shape or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Getting older in my late 20s and being a father, just the stress of being a black man, I ate to cope with my emotions. To this day, if I'm struggling, I don't go smoke weed, I don't pop no pills or sip no lean. Nigga, a goddamn double quarter pound in a Coca-Cola shake me all the way back. You understand what I'm saying? And so, you know, th that was my self-care and that was my coping mechanism. You know what I'm saying? Eating, eating or whatever. And I damn near ate myself into a grave to the point I gave myself diabetes. It's all on my body because of the way I was eating. I wasn't exercising anymore. So for now, my self-care is working out. Like, most of the time, if it's like a bad, bad day and I'm frustrated, I go get 30 minutes on the elliptical. I put a mix together and I just go for it. I get it off my chest. And I feel better when I come home. I'm able to sleep better. Like, it ain't no more I stay up at night worrying about shit. I'll worry about it on the on elliptical. By that time, I get it off my chest. That's how that's how I decompress with my anxiety. If I really really want to eat something, I'm going to vegan friendly. I go get a damn salad. You know what I'm saying? If I whatever, if I feel bad about something, every now and then, you know, I cheat. You know, I get a double cheeseburger if I got enough points and things of that nature. But for the most part, I try to eat better. And you know, my self care is working out. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm about to. It's a court up the street. I'm about to start go shooting ball and things of that nature. I I love basketball. Oh uh, hell. You know, I don't, you know, I I used to play 2K and shit all the time. Now, shit, my son got a Nintendo 3DS. I play Super Mario's 2 like a motherfucker. That shit is that shit is, you know what I'm saying, super duper duper relaxing for me. I might get me a little switch or something so I can play games whenever I'm frustrated. I just need to clear my mind. I like to read books. Um, you know, I like to watch ratchet reality shows right now. 
I'm watching the show about strippers called Beyond the Pole, which is really good. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I like to go to movies. I go, you know, these are things that I do to make myself feel better. That's not harmful to myself or whatever. And rappers, I see meltdowns every single day. Put your fucking phone down. Social media can be so fucking toxic. Especially if you're an artist. It can be so fucking toxic. Put your phone down and go get some help. I understand, like, you know, sometimes you feel better. You feel like you can't open up to nobody. You feel like typing that shit into your phone is a good stress release. But really, you're putting all this energy out. You get people all into your business that really don't need to be in your business or whatever. Go talk to your friend. Go call your mama. Call your pa. Call your grandma. Call your old school teacher. Call somebody. Go talk to somebody. Put your phone down. You ain't got to deal with everything publicly when you're going through shit or what have you. So I talked about, oh, so I, so working out, taking care of my physical health, you know what I'm saying, has, you know, and my mental health has been one of one. I feel better about myself. I feel more confident. My clothes look better on me. My face is slimmer. Nigga feeling more handsome. My swag is up, you know what I'm saying? And so it's making me feel better about myself that I'm losing weight and my body feels better. Another thing for me, sobriety. I don't drink nowhere near as much as I used to. I remember when I first started drinking, me and my girlfriend, and, I mean, Jessica was my girlfriend at the time. We had broke up. And, man, I was drinking a lot because I was going out a lot. And I was getting drunk pretty much every night. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you worried about so much stuff, you turn to that bottle. Man, look, I ain't saying don't drink. I'm just saying, like, understand, like, I had a, I got a friend. I hope you're not listening. But if he's listening, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? He started, you know what I'm saying, engaging in some substances. I'll say that to, you know, recently a lot, and, you know, he's an older guy, or whatever, you know what I'm saying, and I was like, yo, you're a grown-ass man, I'm not going to talk to you about doing what you're doing, but let me know if you're doing it to self-medicate or cope, because if you're doing it, if you need to talk, let's talk about it, but, you know what I'm saying, don't, don't, don't just, you know, don't use this as a way to cope with your problems. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Because you put chemicals in your body that can hurt your body. It can make it worse. You know what I'm saying? If you're not in your right mind and frame of mind when you're going through some shit or whatever. He's like, no, I'm good. I said, okay, you're cool. But you understand I'm always here to always listen to you, to live with you. Or whatever. You know, to live. You know, you ain't got to live with all the stuff on your stress on your shoulder. Come holler at me any single time. You know what I'm saying? Um, once, my, once my EP drops, I'm not drinking nothing else for the album. You know what I'm saying? Drops. Comes out. You know what I'm saying? So my EP drops on March 19th. Lord willing, the album comes out August, September, sometime in the spring or fall, rather. No more alcohol. No more fast food. I'm I'm, I'm trying to drop a, a full hundred pounds between last September and this September. And so, and I want to get myself in shape for everything that's coming for me. You know what I'm saying? But I want to be sober doing it. Like, I feel good doing shows and being sober. You know, you save a whole lot of money and things of that nature. You don't hurt your body or whatever. And I'm getting older, so I need to take care of my body anyways. You know, a lot of young boys, you know what I'm saying, especially in bad rules, young boys want to sip lean, young boys on pills, and they smoke a lot of weed to cope with their situation. Look, man, that shit is killing us, bro. That shit is killing us. You know what I mean? Drinking, all this other type of stuff or whatever. I ain't trying to be holding a doubt because now I'm on this health kick. I'm just saying as a black man who lived through all this shit and I just seen, you know, worked in the school system with all these different kids who deal with all this stuff. As a mental health counselor, I've seen how shit can destroy lives. So, you know, I ain't say being drug free. I'm just saying if you have an issue, which brings me to my last point, talk to somebody about it. Go to somebody. Go get therapists. A lot of times, man, I know people, if you got insurance, you know, sometimes your insurance is covered going to a therapist. Some people, their therapist sessions, you can do an hour for anywhere from $15 to, 40, uh, 15 to $45. You know what I'm saying? Go talk to somebody. Go talk to a pastor. You know what I'm saying? If you were, if you were a spiritual person or a religious person, pray about it. You know what I'm saying? Go find somebody that you trust. Sometimes you need somebody to trust to listen to you. And they're all about getting the answers. But go talk to somebody. Go get some help. I work for a mental health agency. Come sign up with us. Come talk to us. Come holler at us. I go to people's schools. I go to people's houses. I be in people's lives trying to make shit better. Even while I'm going through my own shit. I'm about to go to therapy my damn self. So talk to somebody. You feel me? Like, you ain't got to deal with this shit alone. Because this shit could be stressful. And, I mean, it's so many artists who I love. And I see them do so many destructive things because they're so stressed out with this music, man. You ain't got to worry this shit alone. Take care of your mind. Take care of your body, your soul. Take care of the people around you who love you. 
It's very, very important. You know what I'm saying? Take care of your mental health because, you know, like, our, our, you know, our voices don't rap without what we think up here. We don't write raps. We don't get on stage. It all begins up here. The clearer your mind is, the better you feel about yourself, the better you carry yourself, the more creative you can be to create the best art you could possibly create. You know what I'm saying? The more, you know, the more your, your business can be a whole lot better. You can create great business opportunities for yourself. You can be create. You, you can create something, a music, you can create a foundation, a business, an event or whatever that can help other people. And that's what we need. We need to, you know, whatever type of art that you do, we need to be trying to make sure we're taking care of ourselves and others at all times. Just like 21 Savage, you know what I'm saying? I'm glad he's out of jail. Like, he raps about drugs and killing people. He's he trying to clean it up a little bit now. But he, when, as soon as he got out of the ice thing, detention center, center he's he's opening up, like, a financial literacy, literacy uh, program for kids, for teenagers, to teach people about, kids about how to handle their money correctly. So he might talk about rapping and killing and trapping and, you know what I'm saying, and being the blood and getting shot and all this other stuff, but he's still doing something positive for his community. And that's what we need as black men, black women, black whatever, you know what I'm saying, just people in this culture. You know what I'm saying, we got to put the culture over everything in that capacity, which is, you know, that's, that's neither here nor there right now. But at the end of the day, people, don't overlook whatever's going on in your mind. Don't overlook what's going on in your spirit. Let's deal with it. Talk to somebody. Eat better. Go on to die. Find some self-care. I'm going to read it again. Engage what you can control. Focus on positive things. Watch the company you keep. Watch out for the haters. Don't, don't, don't worry about no haters, man. Keep them niggas from around you. Get your self-care together, your mental and physical. You know what I'm saying? Watch your diet. Watch what you put in your body. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you don't, don't use dope to cope. If you just want to turn up and get lit, you want to throw a couple back and jiggle late, that's cool. But don't go throw a couple back because you had a bad day at work. Go talk to somebody about it. Or see what you do to change your situation. You understand know what I'm saying? Seriously. And like I said, talk to somebody about it. Go find somebody you trust. If you need to sign up for therapy, you know what I'm saying, through a program. If you need to go to a church, whatever, go to find a counselor, find a pastor. Whoever you need to do, talk to somebody. You're somebody you love. Talk to your wife. Talk to your girlfriend. Talk to your boyfriend. Talk to your husband, your mom, and your daddy. Whoever you trust, go talk to somebody. Take care of your mental health, and I promise you, the better your mental health is, everything else as a creative will totally, totally enhance, and you'll be a better person for it. You'll be able to make better contributions to the community, you know what I'm saying, better contributions to other people at large. You'll be able to make better contributions to your bank account, to your family. Like, seriously, you know what I'm saying? Let's take care of your mental health. Don't let this rap shit stress you out. Motherfuckers be committing suicide. Look at Kurt Cobain and look at, you know what I'm saying, Robin Williams and all these great entertainers who killed themselves, you know what I'm saying, because of mental health issues. Donnie Hathaway, all these other people, you know what I'm saying, they might smile and make make us happy, but then inside they crying and, you know, the Chester, the Chester guy with Lincoln Park. You understand what I'm saying? We have to listen to this shit, you know what I'm saying? And look, if you see somebody going through somebody, don't be that person who's scared to reach out and say something to them. Just lend your hand. Hey, man, look. I know you're going through some shit. If you want to talk about it, I'm here. You ain't never got to go through the shit alone. If you're watching Black Ink Crew, my man Ford went through some shit. They all wrapped around and showed him love to help him get the help he needed. He shook back. That's really, really important. You understand what I'm saying? So take care of your mental health, ladies and gentlemen. Seriously, this is real talk. This is grown man talk. This ain't no rap shit. You know what I'm saying? But I know a lot of artists deal with this shit. I know the shit can stress you out. I know we deal with it. Cause people talk with it, and I deal with it myself. And these are some of the things I do to try to get over what I need to get over. You know what I mean? So, that's that. If you're listening to this, you can go to, you know what I'm saying, uh, you want to check the other episodes out, go to YouTube, type in Maroon Music 1, and you can watch all the rest of the, um, you can watch episode 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and now this will be 7 uh, episodes of uh, Black Thoughts Radio, the vlog version, you know what I'm saying, on YouTube, if you just want to see my pretty face, you know what I'm saying, uh, if you want, if you're a streamer, you want to listen while you're cutting the grass or riding to work in the morning, go to uh, mixcloud.com backslash Black Thoughts Radio. You can, you know, listen to episode one through seven. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's always going to be on marcelpblack.com. Yeah, check that out or whatever. I'm trying to work on getting on Spotify. You know what I'm saying? Look, I haven't, I ain't gonna keep, I'm going to keep it straight with you. I ain't took no time to try to update or edit nothing. So that's something I need to start working on myself. For everybody that's been listening, Thank you very much. It means a lot. Everybody's been playing the music. Thank you very much. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting a whole lot more hits on my website, my streaming and my pages. I really, really appreciate that you listen to me ramble my for 40 minutes at a time about whatever. I appreciate all the support. I'm going to try to keep giving you better content and things. You know, I don't want to just talk about gossip shit, you know what I'm saying, and this and the third and whatever. I want to talk about real tangible things that you can take 
and move forward. You know what I'm saying? And that could better you as a person, as an artist. So that's going to be my angle. That's going to be my pitch. Sometimes I'm going to talk more about cultural stuff. But right now, I know it's a lot of Fade to Flow alumni. A lot of people who kind of look up to me as an OG, as a mentor. And these are some of the things that I use, some things that I do to uh, kind of just help people out. You know what I'm saying? Help myself out or whatever. Um, MarcelPBlack.com. MarcelPBlack.bandcamp.com. At Marcel P. Black on all social media. Go to, you can either go to my, my website, MarcelPBlack.com or MarcelPBlack.bandcamp.com and order merch. I'm about to order some new CDs. I got CDs all, all the time, but uh, I'm about to order some more t shirts and put them up on the website. Hey, man, go shop with me. Go shop with me. Hit the merch tab. Go shop with me. You know what I mean? Um, I got a couple of things going on uh, locally that if, if you're in Baton Rouge, you want to take part of on. Uh, March 23rd, I'm doing my Culture Over Everything concert series uh, at Southside Arts Center. That would be March 23rd from 8 to 12 p.m. Uh, 8 to 12 a.m., rather. 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. $7 presales. You go to marcelpblack.com and get you a presale ticket, you know what I'm saying, for 7 bucks, It's $10 at the door. Um, I got Soul Lab BR, you know what I'm saying, holding it down. You know, my partner in Fade to Flow Sundays. He's gonna be DJing, you know. We already do. We are. We always do dope hip hop shows together. I will be performing. I got my boy Rec Riddles coming all the way from. Well, he's coming from St. Louis, but from Newark, New Jersey. Uh, he's gonna be rocking with us. You know, what I'm saying doing some dope, dope shit or whatever. So y'all make sure. You know, y'all can check him out. He's really, really incredible. I met him last summer. And we the click type real quick or whatever. Him and my homeboy Johnny Bravo, and then uh my little bro Dollar Black. No relation. We little bro. That's my bro. But Dollar Black, no relation, you know what I'm saying? Come from Jacktown. If you've been to Fade the Flow, if you've been to the parlor, you already know that Dollar Black is an incredible talent. And, you know, we love him out here, so we're really, really excited. And then one of my favorite young MCs who I feel like, you know what I'm saying, I was one of the first people kind of showing him love and kind of, you know, I, I would say somebody who I kind of discovered, you know what I mean? My little bro, TKO Size, a.k.a. Size, he's going to be on the bill as well. Y'all make sure y'all pull up, man. If y'all came to the last Culture of Everything December 15th, you know, that shit was bumping. That shit was hot. That shit was super duper dope. You know, we, we was in there cracking. So y'all make sure y'all pull up, y'all support, y'all enjoy the show. I mean, we're going to be in there, out of there. I'm trying to go to dances afterwards. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, y'all pull up, get in, get out. Let's have a really, really good time. Um, Got a a, a sponsor uh, by Blurtish. You know what I'm saying? They're going to be manning the table. If if, if you've been anywhere in Bad Rules, you've seen them. I have slanging, slanging comics. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Black-owned comics and different types of, you know, Artwork from Black Creative, so shout out to Blurters. He's gonna be a partner in the situation. Um, on March twenty, on March twenty fourth, the day after, we're gonna put on Slater Flow, the second annual All Women's Hip Hop Showcase at Uppercuts. You know what I'm saying? DJ, all you know, all women MCs, a female host, a female DJ. You know what I'm saying? My homegirl Tubby from the Nerdy Bird work with the Antidote. You know what I'm saying? She's gonna be hosting. She set it up last year. She was super duper dope. Um, we got the the sister, the queen, Legatron Prime out of New Orleans. She gonna be DJing. I'm super duper excited about that or what have you. Um, we got uh, uh uh my girl, formerly known as Gina Mae Jones. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how she pronounce her new name. I ain't gonna lie to you, but I'm gonna say Gina Mae Jones coming from Pensacola. We got Mama. You know what I'm saying? We got Fire Like Ayana, Mama Yana coming from New Orleans. We got Young Jules coming from Jackson. We got Shorty Four Eight, Shouty Four Eight coming from Jackson. We got the sister, the queen. The, the, the dope female MC in, in Acadiana, Mo Black coming. And then we got, you know what I'm saying, pretty much the OG for all female MCs in Baton Rouge Cannon, you know what I'm saying, on the bill. That's 7 to 11 p.m. Upper Cups Barbershop, 1951 Star Lane, free food, free cover, you know what I'm saying, BYOB. All the fellas taking the back seat. We are foregrounded women. We are supporting our sisters in hip hop, you know what I'm saying. Whatever. So we we there to support the sisters. We try to take as much patriarchy out of the situation. A lot of time people think these hip hop shows are, you know what I'm saying, all boys clubs and they can be all boys clubs, but there will be you know, first of all, I try to dead all the mis the misogyny and sexism anyways. All females are always welcome. All women, ladies are always welcome to come participate as a fan or as an artist. So I'm looking forward to seeing y'all there. Real quick, I'm running way, way too long. I'm gonna run down my tour dates. To promote for the culture that I'm running in March and April. March 9th, Biggie's birthday. I mean, Biggie's, we celebrating Biggie Smalls, you know what I'm saying? Also, my homeboy, DJ Slim, Wes Wilkinson's birthday party in Pensacola at Chizuko. That's March 9th. March 23rd is Culture of Everything Baton Rouge at Southside Art Center. Uh, March 27th, my first time ever doing a show in New York City. And I'm going to talk about that more online. I'm really, really excited about that. That's at the Delancey in New York City, New York. March 28th, I'll be in Stanhope, New Jersey at the Stanhope House or whatever. Uh, 
April 4th, 404 day, I'll be in Atlanta at the Music Room. April 5th, I'll be in Birmingham at the Jaybird. April 6th, I'll be at uh I'll be in Memphis at the House of Mackenzie. April 13th, either 13th or 14th, I'll be at the BRCC Spring Fest. April 26th, I'll be in Greensboro, North Carolina at New York Pizza. April 27th, I'll be in Roanoke, Virginia at the Coffee Pot. And April 28th, I'll be at Charlottesville, Virginia at uh, Champion Brewing for the two, the, not two by two, I'm tripping, my bad, Nine Pillars Festival. You know what I'm saying? I got a lot going on. Like I said, the EP will drop on March 19th, you know what I'm saying, on all my social media. Got stuff in my eyes, my bad, y'all. Oh, wrong guy. There we go. All right. So, yeah. Y'all make sure y'all pull up marcelpblack.com, marcelpblack.bandcamp.com, youtube.com, backslash maroon music one, mixcloud.com, backslash black dogs radio. Y'all support. I done ran my mouth way too, way too long. Time me to take my black behind the bed. I la mahabe. Freedom. <laughs>